Catherine Mansfield and Jack Murray were married at last on the 3rd of May, 1918. A year later, found them living in Hampstead in their first real house. Jack, by this time, having achieved an adequate income as editor of the Athenaeum. They nicknamed the house the Elephant. And it was here, at KM's request, that I acted as housekeeper for them. It seemed the days of penny-pinching, of endless lodgings and rented rooms were behind them. But Catherine's continuing tuberculosis forced her to winter abroad, first in Italy and then in France at Monton. These necessary separations imposed a great strain upon them both. I dreamed I was on a boat going home to New Zealand, but you disappeared and it was too late to find you or call you back. It was awful. I'm still here. I made some tea, darling. Did you go to the post office? Of course. Yes, of course. No letters? No, I'm sorry. I don't look so beaten. It's not your fault Jack hasn't written. <clears throat> I know, but... I'm afraid it's rather weak. Oh, how sad. Oh, how very sad. <laughs> sad? Tea? Don't you think so? A cup of weak tea. Oh, one feels such a brute to take advantage of it. Shall we wait until it's stronger? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's not that I want desperately strong tea, darling. A cup of moderate strength will do. Mm. It almost rings the bell. You always say it tastes of old pennies if it gets too strong. Do I? I must curb my crude colonial tongue. Jack really ought to have replied to your last letter. But I think how you've slaved at your reviews for him when the doctor said you must rest. You ask me, it is he who behaves as if he's ill. I don't think I want to talk about it, Leslie. Jack does as Jack does. Would you like to hear my confession? Don't look so shocked, darling. It's not a popish plot. Uh, are you sure you want me to? Yes, I do. But you must listen still as a mouse. I'm too tender to be questioned. I'll try. The present agony will pass. If it doesn't kill, it won't last. Now I'm like a man who's had his heart torn out, but bear it, bear it, as in the physical world. So in the spiritual world, pain does not last forever. I do not want to die without leaving a record of my belief that suffering can be overcome. What must one do? There's no question of what Jack calls passing beyond it. This is false. One must submit. Do not resist. Be overwhelmed. Make it part of life. This is the mystery. I must pass from personal love, which has failed me, to greater love. I write that. I look up. The leaves move in the garden. The sky's pale. It is hard. It is hard to make a good death. Don't cry. It's no use crying over life. Or spill husbands. Thank you, Mary. I forgot 
and my key as usual. I felt in my bag, and there it wasn't. Is Nurse back with little bee? Uh, yes, Mum. And has the fruit come? Yes, Mum. Oh, they didn't forget the purple grapes. Oh, no, Mum. Everything's come. Everything? Impossible. No. No, it's possible. Today, suddenly, everything comes. Of course it does. Well, don't stare so, Mary. I'm not drunk and disorderly. I'm... <laughs> I can't explain. <laughs> uh, would you bring the fruit into the dining room, please? Yes, ma'am. Oh, those pears. Will our tree have such pears, I wonder? I dare say we'll know in the autumn, ma'am. Uh, will that be all, ma'am? Because Cook wants me for the taters. But they don't need peeling. They're unbelievably new. You just have to look at them. And the skin falls off? I see, Mum. Oh, um, tell Cook not too many. Too many potatoes would be vulgar. Yes, Mum. Oh, you beauties. No, Bertha, control yourself. They've got a job to do. To bring the purple in the carpet... ...up to the table. It doesn't matter. <laughs> of course I can get dinner put back ten minutes. Darling, darling, I know it's absurd, but just now, coming back to the house, I was overcome. Don't laugh. Yes, I, I know I'm keeping you from your work, but, but it was this feeling, it was as if I'd swallowed a ray of afternoon sun. A feeling of absolute bliss. Sheer... Yes? Oh. Yes. Well, take a taxi when you're finished. Oh, easily. Eddie Warren's bound to be late. And Pearl Fulton, as you say, is a law unto herself. Yes. Bye-bye, darling. Bye-bye. Be just ornamental, will you? Gosh, I'm too happy. <laughs> but they're adorable monkeys. The bourgeoisie <laughs> don't think so, not at all. To them, my monkeys are a challenge, revolution. Why, oh, why is the middle class so stodgy? So utterly without a sense of humor. Eddie, what happy socks. Aren't they? They grow whiter and whiter as the moon rises. My dear, mm. you must design a room with, with black satin walls and a dado of white socks. <laughs> Eddie, you're Good evening, Norman. <laughs> How's the play, Warren? Mm. In ruins. I've torn it all up. I, I despair of the theater. You won't have mine. And why doth the bridegroom tarry? He telephoned. Cares of office? Mm, he swore he'd get a taxi. Ah. ah, there he is now. Hello. Oh, hello, you people. Down in five minutes. Feeding time. Oh. <laughs> oh. Mm. 
very oh, excited right. relief. Mm. Mm. Miss Fulton can't have forgotten, surely? Oh, I expect so. You know, Miss Fulton's one of Bertha's finds. She's always falling in love with strange women. Oh, I'm not. <laughs> Darling, you do. Waves and strays, soulmates. You know, sometimes I get quite jealous. Oh. Les belles dames sans souci <laughs> ou uh, sans gêne. <laughs> now I vote her cold, like all blonde women. With a touch, possibly, of anemia of the brain. Anemia of the brain, that's very good. Uh, is she on the phone, do you know? Uh, oh, I'm not right. sure. We'll wait a little bit. Well, longer. I... Hmm. On the phone or not, we must eat. Agreed? Mm. I'm starving. Oh, there's a taxi now. That must be her. Yeah. She lives in taxis. Oh, well, she'll run to a fat if she does. Do you know, that's a frightful danger for blonde women. Am I late? Not at all. Come in. My dear, you're too kind. I know I'm late. Mm. I met her at the Alpha show. The weirdest little person. She, she not only cut her hair, but she seemed to have taken a dreadfully good snip at her arms and legs, and her neck, and her poor little nose as well. <laughs> Isn't she very lié with Michael Oat? She was. The man who wrote Love in False Teeth. The very same. And doubtless he'll frizzle in Hades for it. Oh, I rather liked it. <laughs> he wants to write a play for me, actually. One act. One man decides to commit suicide with all the reasons, pro and con, and just as he's made up his mind, <laughs> Which way? But he, he didn't say. What's he going to call it? Stomach trouble? <laughs> 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 yeah. I, I do think it rather a good notion, though. Not half bad. Mm, wonderful. But I think I've come across the same idea in a little French review, quite unknown in England. Oh, birth of the lamb is perfect. Mm. Admirable. Mm. Quite delicious. Mm. You know, I say it without shame. I have a passion for good food. <laughs> oh, the green of pistachio ices. Green and cold, like the eyelids of Egyptian dancers. Harry, you're a poet monkey. Am I? Mm. The white flesh of the lobster. Mm. Luxurious lobster nights farewell. Oh, no, there. It's my favorite. Pope. Dear damned distracting town, farewell. Thy fools, no more I'll tease. This, this year, year in, in peace, peace ye critics crit dwell, ye harlots sleep, sleep at ease. <laughs> <laughs> from another world out here. This is another world. Your friendship means so much to me. And yours to me. Dear, sweet Bertha. What I want to do is to give the young men a show. I believe London's simply teeming with first chop unwritten plays. What I want to say to them is, here's the theatre, fire ahead. Excuse me. Mm. Bertha, weren't you cold? No, darling. I blame Miss Fulton dragging you off into the garden. She didn't. Lady dear, I'm going to decorate a room for the Jacob Nathan. Are you? Now, now didn't, he, didn't he make his fortune in fish and chips? Exactly. One is so tempted to do a fried fish scheme. Oh, yes, oh, madam. Why are you always so rude to Miss Wilson? I'm not. You are. Just now, when we came in from the garden... And, 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 and the backs of the chairs shaped like frying pans. <laughs> and little chipped potatoes all over the curtains. <laughs> you <laughs> trouble. Yes, you must do it for my sake. Because I do love you so very much. And her. And Harry. I've never felt quite so much like this before. Oh, I'll show you in bed tonight. 
how I want you. Shush, darling. You're not threatening to leave us, I hope. My dear, we are the victim of time and trains. You know our shame. We live in Hampstead. <laughs> a whiskey before you go? No, no, thanks, Auntie. It's been so nice. We've loved having you. Haven't we, Harry? Oh, it's been splendid. I do think. But you, you mustn't miss your train. Oh. That's so awful. <laughs> Good night. Bye. Good night, Norman. Hey, Good night. Good night. Delicious food. I, I particularly like the way the left. Train. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Oh. I want the others to go too. Mm, you funny part. Oh. Marble Arch? Then you can come part of the way in my taxi. Marvellous. I, I simply couldn't face a drive alone. <laughs> oh, not you two. Everybody wants to leave us. It's been captivating but there's um... a taxi rank just at the end of the street now bertha you're hurrying them away oh no i only meant she's quite right i'll get my coat hmm. <laughs> oh yeah let me <laughs> i see that you have bilk's latest anthology have you read his new poem table d'Ote? no i just got it yesterday i haven't had time to read it oh, yet it's absolutely wonderful it's got the most brilliant opening line why must it always be tomato soup do let me read it to you um let me see. Um, yes, here we are. Um, yeah, table d'Ote, page 23. It, it, it becomes a refrain, a kind of, kind of salve to an inward wound. Why must it always be tomato soup? Well, it's so deeply true. Tomato soup is so dreadfully eternal. Don't you think? Yes. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Your lovely pear tree. I'm sure its fruit will match its blossom. Shut up, Sean. and quite unable to make any kind of proper life or, or happiness for John. John, she calls him John. Now I know he's a stranger to me. How dare you keep him tied to you? <laughs> Katie, Katie. <laughs> and Jack, when he does right, <coughs> informs it. So cheerfully, <laughs> so apropos. He's publishing a story of hers in the Athenaeum. Quite remarkable, a story. Rather like one of mine. An ordinary man. How could he be so furtive? I know he knows her, but how can he be so secret, so stickily ashamed with me when I've told him and told him I accept? I cannot be a proper wife to him. Darling, she's jealous, that's all. I 
must telegraph to him. But what can I say? Come here. That's all I can say. And say that. Yes. Yes, I must insist. He must come. He must to explain. I'm annihilated. You are? Woman's letter. I told you, I told you to feel free, but not to tell me about her. I haven't, I didn't. How was I to know that Elizabeth Bibesco was going to write to you? She didn't even tell you. No. <laughs> it seems you're both virtuosos of evasiveness really? to be so backstairs about it. Please. You're contradicting yourself. First, I'm not to tell you, and I'm being evasive. Of course I'm contradicting myself. Oh, God, I'm, I'm, I'm ill, Jack, ill. I'm dying. And that's what you can't forgive, isn't it? Look at you now, pale, exhausted. Well, the journey, it's please. not. It's me that exhausts you. That's why you're so glad, so inwardly glad, every time I go away in search of another cure. That's quite unfair! No, it's true. It's been true for three years. I drive you distracted. You can't bear watching me suffer. <laughs> No, I can't. I need you well to get strong, to live our life so that we can live our life. Do you imagine at all that I live away from you? I, I don't. I go right apart from the world. But I can't. I can't watch you not eat. I can't want you not sleep or rest. Wig, how can I, how can I just stand by and watch you, watch you die? But I won't, I won't, not if you're here beside me. I'm only well when you're here. You're not. I am. Oh, bogey, bogey, I want you, you. There's nothing else, I'm homeless. I'm uprooted. I wake in the dark and I hear the sea wailing, wailing. I dream horrible dreams of loss of death. And when I'm awake, I light a candle. I watch my watch racing round and round. Oh, the imbecility of it, my little watch running a race with itself. You don't believe? that we'll ever have our house together. I don't want a house. Our dream. Don't you believe in the farm? Well, you would even get to call it after your brother. The duck pond, the elms. It's idiotic to hope. Waste of energy. I won't hope. Katie? Shall I? Do you want me to come in? Darling. Never, never forgive. You've got to swear you'll never forgive Jack for what he's done to me. I won't, darling. Quite alone, her, both of us. Just us. 
I can't think how they managed to live at all. Who? Mice. How can you, Con? How can you? When we're burying father tomorrow? Absolutely. Don't you think it would be rather nice if we asked her to stay on for a week? Very nice. I could just say after the... after the funeral. When I pay her. My sister and I would be awfully pleased after all you've done for us, Nurse Andrews, if you would stay on for a week. As our guest? Of course, as our guest. Otherwise she'd expect to be paid, wouldn't she? Yes, I'm sure she would. <laughs> exactly. So I must say, as our guest... Jug? Mm -hmm. Yes? Ought we to have our dressing gowns dyed as well? Black? Well, it doesn't seem sincere to wear black when we're fully dressed out of doors. And then when we're at home... <laughs> Nobody sees us at home, Con. Nurse Andrews does. And Kate. Oh, but we don't mind what the maid thinks, Constantia. Don't we? boy was a terror. <gasps> Rolled the two cats with a rod of iron. <laughs> you should have seen them scurry. You like me. I cheeked him back. The old devil. Bet you did. <laughs> <laughs> Kate, this is a house of the dead. Oh, speak for yourself, nurse. Can my young man see the corpse? Certainly not. Oh, go on. You've laid him out so nice. It used to bang with that, didn't he, nurse? And shout! Oh, do this, do that, stop this, stop that. A regular tartar. A cheeky. <laughs> the game she got off to when I cleaned the grate. Oh, at his age. Have you no respect? Oh, he had a high old time. And I'll tell you one thing. If he'd be my old dad, I'd dance on his grave. How did we dare? How did we? But we had to, Jug. We shouldn't have. But we couldn't not have buried him. We couldn't have left him unburied, dear. I don't know. Not in a flat the size of ours. I feel we ought to have tried. Just for a time, at least. To make perfectly sure. I can hear him calling. You did what? You had me buried. Oh, it's all so dreadful. One thing's certain. 
He'll never forgive us. Father will never forgive us for this. Never. <gasps> Have you got enough stamps? Oh, Billy Con, how can I tell? <laughs> we miss our dear father so much. I was wondering. <laughs> Do you think, Jug? that it was perhaps a mistake asking Nurse Andrews to stay on after them. Oh, she was awfully kind to Father Con. I know. But it does mean sit-down meals. And you can't deny it, Jug. She does take advantage. The neighbours have Lady Tooks. She had such a dainty contrivance for the butter. What do you mean, Con? It was a silver cupid, balanced on the on the border of a glass dish, holding a dainty fork. Con, what do you mean for dessert? Oh, I'm sorry, Jack. Is there perhaps just an inch more bread? Thank you, Miss Constantia. Oh, when you wanted some butter, you simply pressed his foot and he bent down and speared you a piece. <laughs> it was quite a game. Oh, oh Kate, could we have some jam? Please. Jam. Oh, what a bother. We can't disturb Kate again. She might. <laughs> I know. There's some marmalade in the sideboard. <laughs> I do hope it isn't very bitter marmalade. <laughs> Speaking of Benny, our brother. He'll expect us to send him something of father's, of course. It's so, so difficult to know what to send to Ceylon. There's no post, only runners. I think his watch would be the most suitable present. Would you trust a gold watch to a native? We could disguise it. Nobody would know it was a watch. There's that corset box in our cupboard, Con. We always thought it might come in for something. Well, even a native corset box. Corset box, Jack? But it's got writing on it. Medium women's 28. Extra trim box. You think it might be almost too much of a surprise? Finding Father's watch inside? Yes, Jack, I do. Then... There's the rest of Father's things to be gone through. But must we? This afternoon? I think we'd better get it over. How many more times must I tell you, Josephine? I am on no account to be disturbed in the mornings. Are you ready, Carl? You go first. You are under no circumstances, you hear, Constantia, to enter my room without knocking. Now, is that perfectly clear? Oh, it's not fair, Jug. You're the eldest. How stiff this handle is! Thank 
Was quite peaceful, I trust. <clears throat> as to the funeral, as your dear father's old friend, and yours, Miss Pinner, and uh, Miss Constantia, I may arrange that? I should like it to be quite simple and not too expensive. At the same time, we require a good one that will last. Our lives, Jack. We'll leave it all. Everything. Hmm. And as for the watch, it would be so much easier to send it to Benny's son, Jack. We will love to have his grandfather's watch. Now, Cyril, your Auntie Con and I know what a man's appetite is, so don't be ashamed of having a good tea. Oh, I say, Auntie, I've only just had lunch. I had to meet a man at Victoria, and he gave me a terrific blowout. What a shame, Cyril. And we see you so seldom. At least you'll have a meringue, won't you? Oh, your dear father was so fond of them. Uh, do you mind if I take half uh, to begin with? Oh, not at all, dear boy. And... Is he still so fond of them? Well, I don't quite know. Don't know? Surely. Well, I mean, it's such a long time. That is... Even so. Wait a bit, Aunt Josephine. Yes, of course. How could I have forgotten? That's it. Father's most frightfully keen on meringues. <laughs> <laughs> now, Cyril, you must come and see your grandfather. Oh, I say. Auntie Con. Gosh, isn't your clock a bit slow? I've got to meet a man at Paddington just after five. Oh. Father won't expect you to stay very long. Come in, come in, don't hang about. What is it? What have you been up to? It's Cyril, Father. Good afternoon, Grandfather. What have you got to tell me? Father, dear. 
Cyril says his father is still very fond of meringues. Eh? His father is still very fond of meringues. Can't hear. Tell me, what's he trying to say? My God, must I? Oh, do, dear. It will please him so much. Come on, come on. Out with it. Father's still very fond of meringues. Don't shout. What is the matter with the boy? Oh, Josephine, do we have to? Oh, I really... it's quite all right, dear boy. He's getting a bit deaf, you know. Cyril only wanted to tell you, father dear, that his father is still very fond of meringues. Meringues? What an extraordinary thing. Come all this way to tell me. Yes. I shall send Cyril the watch. I think that would be very nice. I seem to remember the last time he was here, there was some little trouble about the time. Friday boiled. Fried or boiled what, Kate? Fish for dinner. Oh, well, why didn't you? How could you expect us to understand, Kate? There are a great many things in this world which can be fried or boiled. <laughs> which do you prefer, Con? I think it would be nice to have it fried. On the other hand, of course, Boiled fish is very nice. I think I prefer both equally. Unless, of course, you just... I shall fry it! Constantia, we have something of great importance to discuss. Yes, Jack. The question is, do we keep her or do we not? That is the question. And this time, Con, we must come to a definite decision. Yes, Jack. You see, Con, everything is changed now. Is it? We are free, Con. Free. We are not dependent anymore. <gasps> not on Kate. There's not a father to cook for. That's perfectly true. Father doesn't need cooking for, does he? He doesn't need cooking now, whatever else. Con, you're not sleepy, are you? Sleepy? No. Well, concentrate. The thing is... We can, if we choose, give that girl notice. We can manage our own food. Oh, Jack, could we? What would we live on? Oh, eggs in various forms and cooked foods. But wouldn't that be very expensive? Oh, not if one buys them in moderation. Oh, Jack. But we must decide now. Does Kate stay, or does she go? We can't postpone it again. If we postpone it... ...this time.
as much as he likes. We don't have to stop him. <laughs> Do you know, Con? I've always rather liked the barrel organ. <laughs> The moon's fault. I've been wondering if now, now that we what? No. You spoke first, Con. Go on. No, Jack. After you. No. You began. I'd rather hear what you were going to say first. Don't be upset, Connie. No. Really, Jack? Connie? Oh, Jack. I can't say what I was going to say because... because... I've forgotten. Gone in. Straight off, you're in it. It's wow. a wicked caricature, darling. It's all under there. You've got to read it now. I insist while I make the tea. Oh, Leslie, you're such a friend. I hold you out of bed. You scarcely protest. I demand that you read and you read. Well, you've hardly given me a chance. I shall. Are you the other daughter? Not really, but I could be. Oh, I could be. Darling, in spite of what I've said, you know me, I'm a distraught creature. In spite of what I shall say, you've been a perfect friend to me. Nobody else has. Only you, perfect. 